right, so I think we've left it for a few minutes here. It's 2.02 Eastern. The webinar started at 2, so if people are more than a couple minutes late, they can always catch up a little bit later. So let's get on our way because we got a whole bunch of things to show you guys today. So this webinar is all about how to harness the power of promo standards on Common SKU. Now, if you are new to either Common SKU or to promo standards, the first thing I just want to do is talk a little bit about connected workflow and promo standards all together. So our concept of connected workflow is not only for people and distributors to be able to work together better internally and give you guys a platform to be able to communicate within your team, but it's also the ability to communicate externally outside of your distributorship and communicate with suppliers who are also on common SKU. This industry itself is really behind in technology and I think this is something that's really needed um, and it's funny to think that if you were to place an order on Amazon, you probably would not call Amazon to find out what's going on with your order. So why can't purchase orders work like that? So what promo standards really is, is a way for suppliers to be able to make their uh, product data and their information uh, easily accessible to distributors. So there are five different levels to promo standards, and I'm going to talk through a few of those today. Um, and just kind of what those do. So if you check out on our commonsview.com, there's a connected workflow section where you can actually take a look at the workflow and how this will benefit you as a distributor and ultimately benefit a supplier as well. So kind of if we take a look at this diagram really quick, you'll notice that it does label all the different uh, levels that there are on promo standards. So the first level is inventory, being able to check inventory live. This means not through ESP or Sage or Distributor Central. This means checking inventory directly on the supplier site or straight through their data. The next level down is checking order status and ship notifications. So being able to check on your purchase order by just clicking on a button. No picking up the phone, no emailing your rep, just clicking on a button and seeing what's going on with that PO. The third part is product data, being able to pull product data in directly from a supplier's website rather than having to pull it through a third-party app, actually getting the information coming from a supplier straight from their site, and it comes in with your company's specific pricing on it because how you're connecting with promo standards is through specific credentials to your distributorship. Finally, once you have that product data in, you're able to actually email the PO, and instead of emailing it, you send it as an EPO, an electronic PO. These are machine-read POs, POs that you click on a button and it automatically generates that PO in the supplier system. And why does that benefit a distributor? Well, it bypasses all the other POs from all these other distributorships that are getting emailed in with special notes that are having to be rekeyed. It lowers the chance for any humor error when those POs are getting rekeyed. And because your POs get automatically submitted electronically, it also puts your PO at the top of the queue. So it's going to skip by all those other ones that need to be keyed in, which means you really get kind of first cracks at inventory. And then the last part is e-bills. Now e-bills isn't something that we've really gotten to quite yet on Common SKU, but it's basically the ability for suppliers to send you a bill for your PO electronically. And if you think of all these things work really, really well together, if you can add a product in that has your pricing, you can see the inventory in real time, you can submit the PO electronically, you can then check the status of the PO electronically, and then the supplier can send you a bill electronically, this is all at the click of a button. Think of how many calls that will save you as a distributor checking on purchase orders and how much it will save a supplier from having to answer those calls. And that's really the whole idea behind a connected workflow and promo standards to make this all easier. So if you want to see um, what suppliers on Common SKU are currently connected with promo standards, what you can do is you can actually click on your suppliers tab on the left. And when you click on it, it will show you every supplier on our system in alphabetical order and where they are on promo standards. So you'll see that uh, the green means that they have inventory available. The truck means that order status and ship notifications are available, so being able to check in on the status. And then the pinkish button is EPOs, being able to add product data in. If you notice that you're scrolling through here and you see that somebody is slightly uh, faded, so like this one with AZX or this one with Bam Bams, that those ones are slightly faded, that means that there is the ability to put credentials in there, but they just haven't done it for my distributorship yet. So what you need to do is reach out to that supplier and tell them, hey, I need you to add my promo standards credentials into CommonSkew. 
Okay, so you can scroll through this list. Everybody's list will look a little bit different, um, but you'll be able to see kind of what stage people are at. Obviously, if the stage isn't there, then it's not available. But if it is not highlighted, that means that that supplier still needs to put your credentials in. Now, I'm sure you're sitting there wondering, and I'm guessing somebody asked this question, how do I know who to reach out to? Well, if you actually go into our help article center, there is a help article called Promo Standards Contacts. And you can scroll down and see all the suppliers that currently have promo standards available for order ship and status notifications. And it tells you who you need to reach out to to get your credentials entered. If there is no contact at that supplier, just email your rep and say, hey, I need my promo standards credentials for um, Commons View. Your rep should be able to get those and you can send those credentials directly into the support team. We'll be able to add those in for you. Okay, so check out the suppliers tab, see who is on there. You'll see that we're getting more and more vendors in here every day. Okay, and then if you're not sure, you don't know who to reach out to at a company, check that help article. So the last thing I'm just going to tell everyone is if you see a supplier on here or you see a supplier that's missing from here and you want to be able to work with them easier, okay, let them know, hey, are you guys on promo standards? Okay, and are you guys on common SKU? Okay, this is all here to try and make it easier for you guys to work with those vendors. So that's enough of kind of the preamble. That's a good six minutes of preamble. So let's talk about how this actually works inside of the platform. So what I did, I've already started a project here. Um, so I just want to talk about adding these products in. So to add one of these products in through a promo standards uh, enabled vendor, what you do is you go to ESP or Sage or Distributor Central, whatever it is, and you do a regular search. Let's say I'm going to do like, uh, let's do CV110, which is a Starline product. So if I do this search, what happens is I click on the product that I want to add in. Great. And then I get a pop-up. Now this pop-up is different than how you add a regular product in. This pop-up shows you what colors and sizes uh, there are. So this one only has colors. If it had colors and sizes, it have two drop-downs. Now on a presentation, you do not need to select all the sizes and colors. What we need you to do is you just have to select one. We just need to know what price point to bring in. So let's say I want to bring in this price point. I could hit select and then add product. That will then pull the product directly in through promo standards data through Starline right onto that presentation. Now if I do another item, let's say I do a G500 from uh, Alpha Broder. So if I do that search, great, I'm going to just narrow this down by Alpha. I'm going to click on that. And as everybody probably knows, G500 has a ton of different options. So you can see here I can sort by different colors and by size as well. The cool thing about this pop-up is not only shows us size and color, allows me to select, but I can also see inventory levels, right? You can see inventory levels right here. I don't need to click on a button to check the inventory. Okay, this is kind of one of the benefits of using product data. So I can actually select any of these. It really doesn't matter because I'm just selecting it for a price point. You can see the 3XL, 4XL are obviously more expensive, same with the 2, but I'm going to just give this price point to start. I can click Add Product, and now that adds it into my presentation. Now, when these products are added in, and if you do add a product that is from a supplier that isn't Alpha, Starline, or Cutter and Buck, those are the three with product data right now, say you add a product in from Sandbar or HIT, you can still add it in the same regular old way, just they will have, when you go to edit that specific item, they will have a check inventory button that you can click on uh, to actually see the inventory uh, that they have on hand right now. So for any of those ones that have inventory available but we don't have their product data yet, there will be a check inventory button here. So when editing this item, you'll notice a couple of things. We selected the anti-cherry red and XL. If I want to show the rest of the options, all I have to do is click Update Options. And what that's going to do is it's going to call, it's going to pull all of the options from Alpha, and I can actually just click Select All. And you'll see it selects all of them here for me. And now I'm good to go. I can click Close, and now it will add in all of those options for me under the Product Options. Okay, you can see there they are. So editing this product is very similar to how you edit other products. The only small changes that you have here are 
When you're actually updating your options, you have the ability to then select all of the options or select additional options if you want. And the question that we've been getting occasionally in support is, well, what if I want to add in charges? What if I want to add in other charges? I want to add in you know, the decoration charges on here. Well, with Alpha or Cutter and Buck, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is click Add Artwork beneath the item, and then you can click Add New Decoration, and it will drop in a run and a fixed charge line for you to then fill out the pricing. Okay, so then you can add those in there. So you just have to do it underneath the photo on the Add Artwork button. Okay. The last thing I just want to point out that's a slight change here is that the one you'll notice if you go to the product page and the product page, if you're not using these now, is where we store additional information that comes from um, like ESP or Sage. Uh, in this case, it comes directly from the vendor uh, data. So this is actually a slightly different design product page where it shows you additional information, inventory, all that fun stuff. And then at the bottom, it actually will also sh so show you substitute items in case something's out of stock or stuff that people commonly sell with this item. All right, so just a slightly different design product page. Great. So again, adding a product to a presentation, you don't need to select every size and color off the start. You can select one size and color so we know what price point to bring in. And then to add additional options, you can click Update Options. To add additional charges, you can click Add artwork decoration or add artwork location and it will add in a run and a fixed charge for you then to fill out. So those are really kind of the main changes for those specific uh, vendors, Alpha, Cutter, and Starline okay, when adding their products in at the presentation level. So let's talk a little bit more about how this actually changes the order flow a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sales order and I'll bring across some of these Starline items. I'm going to leave the alpha item. I'm going to re-add it at the actual sales order level. So here we are on the sales order. And I'm just going to bump this enhanced state up just a tiny bit for us. Great. So when you're adding a promo standards enabled item from alpha, Starline, or from Cutter and Buck to an estimate or a sales order, it also works a little bit differently. So for example, let's do this Cutter item. It's MCS. 07726. Enter. Now, when I pull up the search result, just like with the presentation, I'm just going to click on the item, right? Just like you normally would. I get that pop up. Now, because we're working on an estimate or a sales order, you can select multiple lines. So I can sort by color here, sort by size. Obviously, I can look at their stock. And let's say I need small, medium, large, and 2XL. I can click add, add, add add and add. Great. From there, I can click add product. And when I click add product, that's going to add the product in to our sales order. So a little bit different. You're doing the size and color selection up front rather than editing the item and then doing it at that point. Now for the Alpha Broder item, if I, I'm just going to re-add that really quick. So let me filter out Alpha Broder here. Same thing with this alpha item. So I'm just going to go through. I'm going to select whatever color it is that I want. Um, you know, we'll just stick with the antique Irish green. And I think one of the cool parts about this is not only is this bringing in my pricing, but now I don't need to look up what how much a 2XL is or how much a 3XL is. I can just add those in here, and we're going to auto-adjust the cost uh, based off of that line. So we're going to add that item in. And once that item goes blue, we know it's in there, and then we're good to go. So once our items are in there, we're going to go through, and we're actually going to edit those items. And when we edit them, I want to show you guys um, something that's pretty cool, and this is specifically with the Starline products. But we'll do the apparel piece really quick. So if we go into the alpha item, if I click edit, you can see the items are here. Now, again, just from my experience talking to distributors about this, one thing that has come up is, well, what's up with the SKU number? The SKU number is actually Alpha's internal SKU number. So this is the number that they use at their warehouse for picking. So yes, it will look different than the SKU number you see up here. Okay, So this is the reason why you cannot change who the vendor of an item is on an EPO. 
can't change this item from being from alpha to SAMR because this wouldn't make sense to SAMR. This is an alpha specific P, uh, SKU number. So that's why these things will look different. The next part is filling out quantities. And if you're not doing this already, these fields are meant to be tabbed through. Okay, it's just something that I have thought was somewhat obvious, but I think some people are still not doing. If you need to change quantities quick, just tab right through all these menus. Okay. The other thing that this will do is as you're updating quantities, if it pushes your net cost to the next column, it will then automatically adjust the column pricing. Okay, so we'll just change all this to the next column. You can see my 2XL went way down from $7 to $472. I can change my margin, my retail, just like every other item. And then uh, just like any other item in Common SKU, um, filling out the decoration here is no different. You still add in your decoration location. You still fill out all of your details. Okay, um, let's do three and a half inches and color. Great. So you still would add in your decoration the same way, no real difference there. The real differences are up above the cost actually adjusting based off of additional sizes, based off of quantity, and then the SKU number obviously looking a little bit different. Now, on the star line item, it's a little bit different, and I really like showing this, and I showed this in the last webinar because I think it's super slick in terms of how we did it. With this item, we're getting it in one size and color. I'm fine with that. Now, if I needed to add another size and color, I can always click Add Breakdown, or I can click the down arrow. And when I click the down arrow, it gives me another line. I can click on that, and then you know, I can do multiple selections off of here as well. Okay. So once I go through adding my sizes and colors, let's do a decoration. Now, as you guys probably know, Starline does their own decoration. I think this is a really cool piece with hard goods is... You know, instead of me clicking Add Decoration and having to fill it all out like I just did with the Alpha or with the Cutter item, I can click on it. It shows me what decoration methods are actually available. So let's say I want to print Center of Front Pocket. That makes sense. Great. Now, usually here you have to fill out, like, where, and then you have to add the artwork, and then you have to fill out all the details for the artwork. Well, not so much here. It then tells me what decoration method is available for the Center of the Front Pocket. There were multiples, I'd be able to select for multiples. If I click sell, the silk screening, what's going to happen? There we go. Automatically drops in the setup charge for silk screening. Now notice there's no run charge. That's because Starline's actually waived it for common SKU users. And we can make the change here. From there, I still add in the artwork because I still need to you know, fill that out. Awesome. Uh, max and, oh, whoops, that's weights. Let's do max, and I'll just write color, but you'll probably fill out your PMS there, and we're good. So the cool thing about hard goods, because a lot of hard good vendors are obviously their own decorators, um, we're able to pull in those setups and those runs automatically. Okay, and so that's something that's only available with Starline on our system right now, and I think it's super, super cool. You'll see if I do another decoration down below, I do front pocket, great. Okay, it's only available in true color on the front pocket, so I can select that, awesome and then it's going to drop in the corresponding setup for that charge as well. <coughs> All right. So really kind of cool, fast way to be able to do this. Now, for the cutter and buck item, I'm not going to go into too much detail. We're obviously excited about cutter. They just joined um, doing EPOs, which is awesome. Um, so how their items will work is the exact same way as the alpha stuff. You're going to be able to pull that stuff in, and uh, you're going to be able to fill it sizes, colors, the exact same way. It's going to affect your cost columns and everything is going to be groovy. So once you've kind of filled all those out, that's great. Um, from here, we need to fill out shipping. Now, I know these are promo standards items because it has a little promo standards logo. Their logo is that little blue kind of circle. Now, with shipping, you'll notice if I go and I edit the alpha one. When you're editing shipping for alpha, you can see at the top it says this item is eligible for electronic POs. I can select the enhanced date for alpha. I can tell that they need to ship it to a decorator. And I can select a shipping method. Now, these shipping methods are all defined by alpha. This is one other place you're going to notice this integration is different. These are all um, shipping methods that have to be done that have to be done by alpha rotor. Okay, so it has, it has to be listed inside of alpha rotor's internal system. Okay, for this for their method to show here. So um, if 
you'll notice that this list is obviously going to be different than your standard list because, again, it's a machine-read PO, so it has to be something that's on their kind of system. The other thing that you will notice is there's no notes section here. I think notes is a really funny thing, and this is something I've gotten some feedback a little bit about, about adding notes. So with machine-read POs, nobody is looking at this purchase order. Okay? No one at Alpha is looking at it, confirming all the information, keying it in, any of that stuff. Basically, this is going straight into their system. So if we were to add a note, then it's no different than a regular PO, and then somebody would have to rekey it. So with EPOs, it is not possible, specifically with Alpha right now, to add in notes because no one will see that note. The questions that have, a, that have come of that have been like, well, how do they know which warehouse to use? They actually have an algorithm that will look at the shipping method you select, where you're shipping it, the data needs to be there, and then it will assign it to the closest possible warehouse with that inventory. Okay, so that's kind of how they allocate that out. In terms of pricing, all that stuff, that stuff needs to be on your alpha profile in order for it to come through correctly. Okay. Again, moving forward here, if we look at this and we look at EPOs, it's the same thing. If you were to order something on an online website, likely you're not writing special notes about shipping, stuff like that. It's just going through and then it's getting that order going in their order management system. So it's a similar idea here. Now for me, I'm just going to uh, select you know, some random decoration information because this is literally no different than how it usually goes. Cutter and bucket is going to be the same. When you click edit, you fill out the information, and again, shipping is going to be based off of shipping methods that they have available internally, and you can select off of that. The only difference with Cutter and Buck and with Starline, okay, something you can do with them that you cannot do with Alpha Broder, is inside of your admin section, you actually have a section in here that will say um, third-party promo standards, third-party shipping accounts. And you can add in your third-party shipping account information here, okay, which then shows on the PO to Starline or to Cutter. This is only for Starline and Cutter, not for Alpha Brother. Okay, so you can add in your third-party account stuff here um, to make selectable. Great. So the Cutter and Buck stuff, pretty easy, right? Same way that we just filled out the stuff for Alpha, we fill out all of our information here. Awesome. Shipping to a decorator. Great. We'll select a shipping method. Uh, overnight. Sure, why not? And then we'll fill out a couple of quick details. Great. And with the Starline PO, same thing. Okay. You'll notice with the Starline purchase order, okay, there is a notes section here. And you can see this is me selecting which um, shipping account I want to use based off of what's in that admin section. Okay, um, you do have a note section on your Starline PO. The thing I want to stress about this is if you do write in notes, then that PO needs to be checked. I mentioned this with the Alpha. With Alpha, it's not an option. Um, with Starline, it is. If you write a note in there, then that PO needs to be reviewed and will be reviewed before it goes into processing. I think a really great story that we got from um, John Norris over at Starline was when we first released this launch, um, I think it was the first or second EPO that came through. They actually had about 80 POs that needed to be re needed to be keyed from other systems into their system. 80 different purchase orders that needed to be keyed into their system. But they had an EPO come through from CommonSQ and it skipped through and passed those other 80 POs and went straight into production. So talking about kind of first rights to stock, it went right past those 80 other orders to the top of their queue. So if you do add a note in here, unfortunately it's something that they have to review. Okay, and then doesn't put you at the top of the queue. Once we kind of generate our, um, all of our shipping information there, you're able to then create your purchase orders. And when you create your purchase orders here, it's just like creating purchase orders on any other order. It's going to have one PO for each vendor that's involved. And just like with all of the other purchase orders, you can actually go and click on the PO number, and it will show you a preview of it, and then everything will be good. The main difference that you'll notice on this screen is with the actual um, endpoint here, instead of email to supplier, it says send to supplier. So you can click send to supplier, and that will then send the, electro the electronic PO. 
When you click send a supplier, you have the option to BCC certain other people. You can BCC anybody else. You can choose who it comes from. You can see here it says it'll send electronically. Now, if you submit that PO, mine's going to fail because obviously I don't want to be putting in a fake PO. If for some reason there is a problem with your PO going in, we'll tell you that there's a problem. And basically mine's telling me that there's an invalid address. So we'll tell you what the problem was. You can either cancel and make the adjustment or then you can email it in if you really need to get it into the supplier. If it does go through successfully, that's great. It'll say that it went through successfully and the status of that PO will then move to say submitted. Now the very last thing, and if you've been sitting through this entire webinar and you're like, well, he hasn't talked about being able to check the status of things. One of the really cool parts about this is that when you do send in the EPO, there's a button that says check order status, which you can click on about 30 seconds after you send in an electronic purchase order. That check status button, when you click on it, will bring up a screen that looks something like this. Uh, instead of that one, let's do the other one first. Something like this. There we go. So this is what we'll show you when you click check status. It'll show you what status the PO is in in promo standards, what status we recommend in common SKU. You'll be able to update the status. Then it will show you the order number, um, when they expect it to ship, when it should be there, who to contact if you have questions, um, if they have additional notes, if you need to do anything, and when they updated it last. All at the click of a button. That actually will also be located on your production report. Um, if you go and you take a look, you'll notice that your production report, I'll just grab that uh, project number, which is 8553. You'll notice on your production report that there will be a blue button. You can click on that, and that's your status update. It'll pull up that screen for you. Finally, when something ships, you'll be able to click on that button again, and it will look like this. It'll tell you, hey, this is complete. This is when they expected to ship it. This is when it should be there. This is when they updated it. And then it'll say, hey, this is when we shipped it. This is where we sent it from. This is where it's going. And it will give you all the tracking IDs. So all at the click of a button, we're able to create that purchase order. We're able to submit that purchase order. We'll be able to check on the status without ever having to pick up the phone. So that kind of wraps up everything that I have to show you guys today. Hopefully, if you had some questions, you threw them in there. If not, as always, you can reach out to the team at support at commonskew.com. So get in there, take a look, see, make sure that your credentials are entered into CommonSkew so you can start taking advantage of this and start spending more time out there selling or whatever is more important than you rather than having to pick up the phone and call and check on POs or check pricing or inventory. So check your statuses. Make sure that you are uh, locked in there with your credentials with your supplier. If not, reach out to them. Get them to plug it in there so you can start taking advantage of this. Okay, this is an initiative that CommonSQ is pushing really hard on, and we're going to continue to be pushing suppliers onto this kind of method. Um, so hopefully you guys see some stuff in there that you really like. And as always, reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks, guys, and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.